What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about why the gig economy is literally destroying the American workforce and why the gig economy isn't good. And this has come from some of my research and it's just built upon the economic analysis. So I want you guys to hear me out because this is going to be kind of startling. Also, once again, this Sunday, March 20th, 4 p.m., we're having the first live training of home economics. Link is below. And shout out to all of the people who lead the well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you folks. Thank you. And let's get into the gig economy. First of all, I want to start off with my past. How did I used to get jobs? I remember the first job I ever had. I used to work for this place called Sign Builders. And this is what I did. I had put it in my head that I wanted to get a job because I wanted some money. So I left my house and walked all the way up to Sign Builders and uh, asked them did they have any work. And I knocked, talked to the lady at the front and she said they had no work, right? And the owner of Sign Builders, who was rolling around in his Corvette, actually passed me and he go in and he says, who was that guy? Because he saw me leaving and he came back in his Corvette, picked me up and created a job for me. This is true story. He actually created a job for me. I was making more money than my mother working at Sign Builders. And Sign Builders, we manufactured the signs for McDonald's, Hardee's, you know, the, the signs on the, on, the, uh, on the post. We made those and they had the machine to press and they had all of the equipment to form fit. It was a metal fabrication shop and they had all of this equipment. So uh, that's how I got my first job. And my second job, which was the United States Army, I was in a delayed entry program and they would come get us and take us out to eat probably, I think it was once a month. Yeah, I think it was once a month. And I was in that program for a whole year, just talking, getting to know people. And then when I got out the military, this is what I had to do. I had to put on a dress shirt, some slacks, and some shoes and go ahead and apply for the job and secure the interview and then show up at the interview and talk about myself and my qualifications. This is how most people in America got jobs back in the day. Let's introduce the cancer and you will see why as I get into it, why the gig economy is a cancer and also let me make a little departure. Uh, I had a consulting business and we had to hire people. And one of the things that I found to be really interesting, if we had 20 people respond to the ads and we set up 20 interviews, only 10 would show up. And this was 2017. I figure it may even be worse today. And then I'll, I'll explain why as I go through this. So what is the gig economy? It's Uber. Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, Rody, Amazon Flex. Um, there's another one. There's actually Lyft, Uber, Rody, Amazon Flex, Instacart, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and there, there's a few more. Now, what are these gig economies? First of all, there is no interview. There's no interview whatsoever, which kinds of, if you are a user of the gig economy, there's people who participate in the gig economy as the delivery drivers, okay? And if you're like me, I'm a consumer where I go on the app and I order. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is my experience isn't uniform. I will have some really good DoorDash drivers and I will have, like, did this happen? I had this guy who um, called me and he was like, 
before he even got here, it's like, could you meet me in the lobby? And I was like, well, you just come in and because this is typically how it happens. Um, they come in, the doorman calls me and I was like, send them on up because I'm ordering food because I don't want to go get it. And this guy, he actually just dropped the food off. He didn't even talk. The doorman wasn't even at the, he just dropped the food off. He got a one star. I, I, he got a one star for that. And what I've noticed is that my customer experience as a user of DoorDash is kind of haphazard. Sometimes I get a good dasher who will come, who will not call me, who will not bug me. And then they will come in and the doorman will call me and they will come up. That's what I call a good DoorDash experience. If I have to go downstairs and get it, uh, you're getting a bad review because that's not the, the reason that I, as a consumer, ordered DoorDash. Once again, I am part of the consumer marketplace. We don't care about your kids. We don't care if you're sick. We don't care if you hurt. We just want our stuff when we want our stuff. In that regard, I am part of the consumer mob. And the experience is in uniform. And what I found out was the experience wasn't uniform with Uber and it wasn't uniform with Lyft. Sometimes I would get the most amazing Uber and Lyft drivers. And sometimes I literally had this guy pull up in a car. The front end was smashed. The, the passenger door was pushed in. The rear door had some scrapes and the rear bumper was hanging off. And I'm like, you, we sure we're gonna make it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It, it'll, it'll go, it'll go. So we get in and then this Uber, he was a Lyft driver. He was playing the most obnoxious music loud and he was bopping and bapping up front. And then at one point he got on his other phone because he had one phone for Lyft. He got on his other phone and he was having this conversation with I presume to be his baby's mama. And it wasn't a good conversation because he cussed her out. And I was just sitting there like, oh my. Once again, he, he got a bad rating. He got a bad rating. And one of the things that we're seeing, and this is why the gig economy is killing the American workforce, is the gig economy is pimping at its finest. The gig economy, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash. And I didn't understand until I did a little research how big DoorDash was. Do you know that DoorDash has 1 million door dashers. Cause you know, there's this guy's YouTube channel called Nugs, N-U-G-G-S. He's, he's quite humorous, he's funny. Uh, he's a door dash driver and he gets a lot of views. And there's this other one, the door dash diaries, Bentley Coop. He gets a lot of views and I was like, who's watching them? Cause all they're doing is just, you know, talking about door dash how to execute on DoorDash, how to pick up, what's good pickup, what's a good door, and like they, they get lots of views. I didn't understand that the DoorDash audience, okay, first of all, there's already a million plus DoorDash delivery drivers. And then there's probably another million who's thinking about it. So that's like 2 million people, right? And I'm just sitting there like, oh, once I started diving, because men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie and when you look at the numbers oh there's a potential audience of two million people for doordash content it makes sense why these videos do so well there's another girl jen on the go jen on the go she does instacart and she has a love hate relationship with instacart she gets a lot of views and i am a consumer of doordash i use lyft i use uber and I have not been to the grocery store since I've discovered Instacart. I don't go to the grocery store. It's just so much easier to go on the app, pick what I want and just get me uh, instant. Now, this is one of the things that I do. I am a good tipper. Uh, typically, if someone's going to bust me 10, 20, 30 items, 
I will tip accordingly. I tip a dollar per item. So if they do 10 hours, 10 items, they get a $10 tip. If they do 20 items, they get a $20 tip. If they do 30 hours. Also, this is something you may like. If you like all my alcohol right here, right? I got that from Towers Alcohol and that was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. It was like 20 bottles of alcohol. So it was a $20 tip. And that is the fastest that I've had an Instacart um, order picked up. Like literally within two minutes, it was like, bam, so-and-so shopping for your alcohol, right? And he, he came with gifts. He got a, he got a really good rating and why I'm saying the gig economy is cancer. Okay. First of all, if you, you there's a, there's another DoorDash guy, Moore's Finance, M O R O O R E Finance. You know, he, he, he does DoorDash and he's talking about finance. It's very interesting. And they talk about how much they make per hour, right? And typically it's, you know, a good, DoorDash session per hour is 22 to 25, 27 bucks per hour, which if you were to, and this is the thing, they don't work a full 40 hours. All right. So keep that in mind. So 25 bucks an hour is roughly cause 20 bucks an hour is 38,000 and 25 bucks an hour on a 40 hour week is $1,000, but you know, some of these guys nugs, he goes hard, he goes hard. He'll do 40, he'll do 50, he'll do 60 hours. You know, he goes hard and nugs talks about his numbers and what it is doing. And this is why the gig economy is killing the American workforce. All of these gig economy jobs are low wage jobs. I mean, um, there's nothing, you know, any job that you do not have to put on clothes and go in for an interview is typically not going to pay you very well. It's just not. And this is one of the things because the gig economy, because, all right, first of all, as an employer, as someone that has a business and had to hire people, hiring people is before the gig economy was already a challenge. Now with the gig economy, why am I gonna put on a shirt and tie and shoes and go in for an interview when all I can do is hit this app, go in and put my credentials in the app. And then, you know, within so many, uh, like I signed up for Instacart just to see how, because I'm not going to go out shopping. I'm not doing that. And literally Instacart, will have you shopping, they will send you your Instacart debit card, right? They will send that to you within three days. So most of these gig economies, uh, I don't know, because I didn't sign up for DoorDash because I wasn't doing DoorDash. No, I wasn't doing Instacart. I just wanted to see, because you know, watching Jen on the go, because she's like, hey, welcome to another episode of Jen on the go. And then she always has this thing, let's go, right? Kind of, kind of quirky. And what it is doing is it is destroying the initiative of the American workforce. If you know that you can do Uber and once the thing, and there's a God, what's this guy's name? He's a brother, the gig nation or something, a gig economy. I forget what he calls this YouTube channel. There's this thing called multi apping where you're doing Uber and Lyft and DoorDash all at the same time. So the ideal is if you're multi-apping, there's really no downtime because if Uber doesn't send you something, then Lyft will send you something. And if Uber and Lyft doesn't send you something, then uh, DoorDash will send you something. And if DoorDash doesn't send you something, Uber Eats will send you something. And if Uber Eats doesn't send you something, Instacart. I literally watched someone who was multi-apping on Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, and Uber Eats. And they were, they, they put up their total, right? A whole day of doing all that, wear and tear on your car, and they only made like $190.
which they thought was pretty good. Because, you know, if you do that five days a week, that's close to a thousand bucks a week. Except here's where the pimping comes in. If you're doing Uber, you're doing Lyft, you're doing DoorDash, you're doing Uber Eats, you're doing Instacart. This dramatically depreciates your car faster. And that is a hidden cost that most of these people do not factor into their earnings. Because when I had my car rental business, I literally had someone who was doing the gig economy put 14, because I think they were doing shift work. Because I mean, it's really hard for one person to put 14,000 miles on the car. Because I mean, literally for driving from here to California, it's like 2,500 miles. And that's gonna take four days. So if you went from Atlanta to California, then back to Atlanta and you know, we're only talking 10,000 miles, 10,000 miles. So it's really hard for one person to put 14,000 miles on a car by themselves. So one of the things that you're getting is these uh, gig economies like with Instacart, there is something that's called a bot. And one of the things is Instacart batches vary. There's really good batches, there's really bad batches. And they created this bot and there was a ring of Instacart shoppers that used the bot to steal all of the really good batches. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it's just crazy, but the gig economy is pimping at its finest because you have Uber. Uber doesn't have any car cost. Uber doesn't have any insurance cost. Uber just is pimping Uber drivers. Lyft, same thing. DoorDash, same thing. Instacart, same thing. There's something called Roadies. R-O-A-D-I-E-S. Roadies is a delivery service. There's something called Amazon Flex, which is a delivery service. So essentially, all of these companies are pimping out these people in their cars. I want you to really think about that. First of all, you're in a low wage environment to begin with. And then you have the added cost of depreciation and gas on your vehicle. I crunched some numbers. So let's say you're making, let's say you're making proverbial a thousand bucks a week doing Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, okay? The depreciation on your car is $200 per week then we factor in gas. So once you factor in the depreciation, once you factor in gas, you're really at about $600 per week. And if you have a major repair, you may have made no money that week. So once again, with depreciation, the cost of gas, and other things, because like I said, I don't do Uber, I don't do Lyft, I don't do that. I don't know what other costs may come up, but the gig economy is screwing people over and it is, once again, my favorite expression, luxuries once tasted become necessities. So, that in the beginning, I told you what I had to do to get the job, right? The gig economy removes all that. You could be at home one o'clock in the morning and sign up for Uber or sign up for Lyft or sign up for DoorDash. Once again, it's very easy. And they don't look at you. I will say one of the good things is there's no racism with these apps. If you fit the qualifications, you can look like a purple Martian and they will like, okay, your car fits, you drive, you pass the background check, here's some rides. So in that regard, it's good because there is no racism in the gig economy. There is none. The gig economy needs bodies. And I was shocked. Cause you know, like I did not know DoorDash was that big. To have a million DoorDash drivers, Door Dra DoorDash is a billion dollar company. DoorDash is a billion dollar company. 
Uber has 3.9 million drivers around the world. I don't know if DoorDash is international. I do know, I know for a fact that Uber is international. Uber's in London and other countries. I don't know if DoorDash, I haven't checked that, but the scale to manage a million people, the computing system to handle a million orders a day, that's quite significant. Uh, but once again, all of these companies are pimping out the delivery drivers. I mean, who said pimping's dead? Because first of all, and this is something that I heard from many Lyft drivers, that Lyft plays around with the algorithm and it messes with your money because this guy's like, I did this long ride. I thought, you know, the ride was um, 80 bucks. He thought I was gonna get me like 70 bucks. He only got 45. So these companies are playing games with their contract workers because by law, they do not forbid you to work for anyone else. So you can be considered and classified as a contract worker. This saves these companies billions because they don't have to pay payroll taxes and they don't have to provide health insurance and they don't have, I mean, it is pimping at its finest. And what it is doing right now, you're getting a lot of young people who are entering the workforce. You will have people due to the gig economy who will never have a normal job. I mean, you're going to have someone who's going to come out of high school and they're going to start driving for Lyft, Uber, they can start doing DoorDash and they're never going to have a real or normal job. And here's another issue with these gig economy jobs. You have no coworkers. You're just out there doing what you're doing by yourself. So socialization takes a hit. You don't have, you don't, you don't have any coffee breaks, buddies. You don't have any, and like for a young person, this can be detrimental to their socialization skills. I'm about to say something and I'm not trying to be insulting, um, but I know some truckers and a lot of truckers are a little different because they spend all their time alone. Their socialization, you know, some truck drivers have really good socialization skills. Uh, there's one guy on YouTube, not your average trucker, He's married, he has a family, he has employees. So his socialization skills are pretty good because he interacts with his drivers, he interacts with his wife. And so, but there are some truck drivers out here, just got out of high school, went to truck driving school, and they're in that truck two, three, four weeks by themselves, and their socialization skills don't exist. They don't exist. And also, one of the things that I like to do when I have my DoorDash is to see how they're dressed. None of these guys have a work uniform. Uh, one of the things, I'm, like I had this guy who delivered my food, and he got a good, he got a good rating because he did everything he needed to do. I'm not going to dock your rating because of the way you look. You know, as long as you perform the service the way that I want the service performed, I'm going to give you a high rating, you know, regardless of how you look. And this dude had a fro, he had a pick, he had a tie-dye shirt on, he had some shirts on, and he had some slides with socks. This is not a typical of how these guys dress. It's not atypical at all. It's kind of normal that a lot of times these guys have no, have no, um, they, ha they don't have the ability to coordinate. They just like, hey, I'm doing DoorDash, I'm doing Uber, I'm doing Lyft. I'm just throwing some stuff on and go out here and slang these burgers. Uh, so from a socialization standpoint, from a wardrobe standpoint, these are two things that take a hit. 
to take a hit in the gig economy. And I don't even know what are the long-term ramifications because the oldest gig economy job is Uber, which Uber has been around since like 2012, I believe. So Uber has been around 10 years, I think. I'm not 100% sure, I haven't looked that up. But this is pulling because Uber has 3.9 million people. DoorDash has a million, like 1.1 million people. So that's 5 million people right there, just between Uber and DoorDash. Lyft has 1.9 million. I don't know if Lyft is international. So that's 7 million. And then I don't know the numbers because I haven't looked them up of Amazon Flex. Uh, Instacart has like 200,000 shoppers. Instacart isn't that big at the moment, but still 200,000 people is quite, that's a, that's a big workforce. Even though they're independent contractors, it's still part of their workforce. So one of the things that I am seeing I don't think the gig economy is going anywhere any, anywhere soon because I fully expect there to be more of these app jobs. Because, um, I mean, the payoff, the payday is staggering. Travis Kolenek, Kolenek, whatever his name, Travis, the founder of Uber, he is a billionaire because of Uber. He is a billionaire and DoorDash. I haven't looked up the numbers, but a million person workforce tells me that this is a billion dollar company. So whoever founded DoorDash, and I'll, I'll research that at, is more than likely close to being a billionaire or is a billionaire. And I don't even know when DoorDash was founded. And then Uber Eats, which is a spinoff of Uber, and then Instacart, I don't know the founders of Instacart, but I guarantee you, whoever found an Instacart is sliding millions of dollars into their pockets. They may not be a billionaire, but there's, so the, the payoff for the founders of these apps is eye-popping. So there will be more apps. Uh, there will be more, I don't know what it's like, there's one that's called TaskRabbit, it's kind of a, uh, you know, if you need some, something moved or maybe you need an electrician, that's TaskRabbit. TaskRabbit, for people who need stuff done and who, who look, they know about it, but it's not like a household name like Uber or DoorDash. But the gig economy is pimping out people, utilizing and wearing down their vehicles, dramatically, in my opinion, underpaying them. And it is preparing them because once again, luxuries once tasted is one of my favorite expressions, okay? Here's another expression that I'm gonna start using. If you don't use it, you lose it. So these people, they're not developing socialization skills, they're not developing um, how to get a job skills. And I don't know, I think in this current economy, we have a lot of people who are hired to work remote who never actually have a in-person physical interview. I think that's the thing. So, but even with um, doing that, I had to participate. I helped a friend out. I was on a Zoom call and they were hiring some people and they wanted my input on some of the candidates and stuff and I gave my input. I was responsible for someone getting or not getting a job because of what I said. And one of the things is I know how to read people and I know how to be people quite well. And there was this one guy, he put on a really good show, but I'm gonna tell you why he didn't get the job. His background. Once again, listen to me and listen to me well. If you have a person who is disorganized in their personal life, that bleeds over to their professional life. 
So this person was on a Zoom call and his background was trash. And I'm like, this is gonna be the person whose desk is gonna be messy. This is gonna be the person who's not gonna be orderly. They're not gonna, and that, that was the reason he didn't get, cause he didn't have enough sense to do, like to have a clean clutter, clutter free background. There was actually quite a few people who just, hey, how you know, this is Gail. And then she had like a surfboard up on there and some other stuff. And I, I'm quite sure you can tell if a person is clean, neat, and organized very much from their presentation. And it was just, mm, a lot of people didn't get that job because they, but once again, the gig economy is not teaching people how to get jobs. If I was trying to get a job and I was gonna do a remote interview, my background would be cleaner than it is right now. There would be nothing in the background because once again, I am being evaluated on my digital presence. So my digital presence, like once again, YouTube backgrounds are a big thing. They're a big, big, big thing. This is why sometimes I go downstairs and I'll be sitting on what some people, it's a bench, it's not a sofa, but it's a bench with very tall upholstered back and it, it makes for a nice backdrop. And sometimes I will go in the conference room because that's a nice backdrop, but the backdrop makes a big difference. And these people are going into the gig economy and they're not learning how to interview for higher paying jobs. So the gig economy is pimping them and the gig economy is messing them up for future opportunities because once again, you know, I've consistently watched DoorDash. When I watch these DoorDash videos, I watch to get income information. And a lot of these guys think, you know, 20, 25, but once again, they're not working 40 hours. They're not working 40 hours. So even at 25, 27 bucks per hour, because what they will do is like Moore's Finance, he will do the breakfast, then he would go work out, and then he would come out and do the, the evening shift. So, a lot of these guys don't have very good work ethic. Uh, I was renting out my car to an Uber driver who literally sat in his car 12 hours. He did not take any breaks. He was like, I would eat in my car. I would pull over and use the bathroom at a restaurant or something. And he said he would drive for 12 hours straight. And he said, well, when he started doing that, that's when he started making money. So a lot of these guys don't have the work ethic to sit in that car. Because you will see, if you watch these videos, the DoorDash, like I'm gonna do a shift for an hour or two, maybe three. They're not pushing it. They're not killing it. So even at 25 bucks an hour, and let's say they work 30 hours a week, um, that's 750. Yeah, 750 minus gas and depreciation. They're pretty much at about four or 500 a week so no one's ever mentioned depreciation or gas they, they don't mention that and that's a real cost it is a very real cost so the gig a nation i feel is going to grow because one of the things is hiring people was already hard before the gig economy existed and with the gig economy in your head, knowing that, hey, I can do Uber, I can do Lyft, I can do DoorDash, versus going to put on this, this, this suit or costume to get this job, uh, it is preparing people for low wage jobs in mediocrity the rest of their life. This is why the gig economy is harmful to the American workforce, because luxuries once tasted once you get a gig economy job let's say you become a you do the uber lyft doordash uber each truck four factor not trifecta four factor and you get used to that you get used to like today and eh, i don't feel like getting up and you don't have to get up and then you would just go ahead and add extra hours on your next shift to make up for your time um once you get used to that, because here's the thing, as an independent contractor, there is no one watching you. 
There's no one emailing you. There's no one saying, hey, John, you need to get in your car and drive. No. So if you don't want to work for three or four days, and this is one of the things that happened when I was renting cars, I would have people who would literally go out of town and they would be late because they're not working. So these gig jobs give people a lot of flexibility, but that flexibility comes at a huge, huge cost. And I'm just seeing more and more and more people. Like right now, I've literally seen so many advertisements for people trying to teach people how to be YouTubers. And I, I will say, if you can develop an audience and you can get, you don't even have to get 100,000 subscribers. I have seen people do four and 6,000 a month from 40,000 subscribers. So, you know, from a comfort standpoint, you know, doing YouTube, because this is my YouTube internet day, um, I'll work maybe six hours, seven hours today, then I'll have dinner and then I'll kick off. Um, from a comfort standpoint, I'm at home. I'm at home. I don't have to leave my home to make money. So I can see why it would be very, very attractive. But what I feel in the next five years that YouTube is going to be extremely saturated, extremely. Every niche, every category is going to be extremely saturated. I'm going to tell you one niche that's right, that's very saturated right now is the credit card review in the financial is the credit card review or how to get credit. Um, shout out to the credit plug. When he started about two years ago, there was plenty of room. Now that niche is saturated. There's literally, uh, there's a girl, she's, you know, talks about the Apple car and everything. And there's all, and I've noticed all these guys have very low subscribers. Their videos may get views, but they have very low subscribers because there's so many people doing credit card content. And you know, when I relaunch Savage Finance, I will do a little credit cards, you know, content, but not a lot because uh, it is dangerous. So the gig economy is screwing people. You don't get any benefits. You don't get any health insurance and you can work a 40, you can work a 50, you can work a 60 hour a week. Um, but the thing is, you don't get no benefits. Oh, and you got to pay your own taxes. That is something that is going to screw a lot of people because a lot of people they're spending their money. They're not, they're not like taking X amount of dollars and tucking it away in the savings account. And if I was a gig economy worker, I would have myself a holding company and I would pay myself a weekly because once again, these taxes, a lot of people are going to get in trouble with the taxes. There's going to be a lot, a lot of issues, a lot of issues with that. Big, big issues because the average um, person isn't financially disciplined enough to hold on to that money and then pay their taxes in one lump sum. Like me, myself, I pay my taxes monthly. I just feel that it's just better because I would hate to have to write out six figure check into the year. That, that would suck. That really, I mean, it's, you know, taxes suck anyway. But one of the things that you have to understand and one of the things that you have to acknowledge is the American workforce is going through a lot of changes. And let's talk about the bottom of the American, and I would put gig work at the bottom of the American workforce. Um, it is expanding. There are more and more people who are doing gig work. Um, I would almost put Amazon work, because Amazon pays 15 bucks an hour. I would almost put, because Amazon, if you breathe in, Amazon would hire you. There is no like, well, let's check your, no, no, you could just walk in there and like, I wanna work. Bam, you walk in Monday, you do your drug test Monday, you're working Tuesday. 
Amazon is like, we need bodies. Walmart, we need bodies. Uh, Amazon and Walmart, they both have very high turnover rates and they just deal with it. It's like, it's just part of being in business at our scale. So they just deal with it. And I would put Amazon and Walmart in the same arena as with gig work because it's low paying work with little chance of future advancement. And this is one of the reasons that I feel gig work, because like I said, I feel that these companies are just gonna grow. Um, I don't know if there's gonna be, a, you know, there's Uber and Lyft, I don't know if there's gonna be another, I think there's other people trying to do ride share. Uh, once again, and I would go ahead and put Toro and Airbnb in the same vein as the gig economy because Toro and Airbnb are pimping out people. Toro's pimping out people for their cars. Airbnb is pimping out people for their house. And I saw this, I saw this well-constructed, this, this, this article, this 25 year old makes 150,000 and they did use the word gross on a hundred Airbnb properties. I was just sitting there like after costs and expenses, I would peg his costs and expenses at 110 to 120,000 a month, which means he, he's not making as much as the article would have you believe. The business is generating revenue. Let's talk about that. The car, the car rental business generated revenue, but it did not generate money that I could slide in my pocket. It didn't do that. It never did that. And that's one of the reasons I shut it down. Um, a lot of people are doing what I like to call the Amazon model. And if you have done anything with Amazon, you know Amazon is a low price leader for a reason. So if you put something on Amazon, you're, you're, it's a race to the bottom. So you've got these guys who, I, I got into an argument with this guy years and years ago. It got really heated because uh, when crypto came out, I was you know, the anti-crypto guy. And I, we got to the point where he just cussed me out and I'd be unfriended him and I moved on. And he was talking that, you know, he can live on six or 7% margins, you know, at scale. And I'm like, I predicted what was gonna happen. If you don't know what happened, a lot of Amazon sellers got screwed because they were selling at very thin margins. And then when Amazon, cause this is one of the things Amazon will do for you, do to you. Amazon will watch your listing and it's on their, their website. So they're getting all of this data. They know how much you, that you pay for it. They know what it's selling for. And then what Amazon will do is take this data and then they will go out and find, or in many cases, create their own factory where they can produce it way cheaper than you can buy it and then sell against you. And they can like, let's say, your widget cost 35 bucks. That's what you're selling it for on Amazon, 35 bucks. Your widget cost you 15 bucks to make, right? Well, Amazon will go out and create their own factory and then sell this widget for $20. All right, you, you're buying this thing for 15. If you sell it for 20, you're like making a dollar or two per sale, where Amazon is selling it for 20, but the cost to manufacture it is $2. So they're making way more money than you selling the same exact product against you at a cheaper price. This is something that Amazon has been doing for years. And this is one of the reasons that I personally did not mess around with Amazon. Um, because Amazon will do this. And some people have been able to build a brand on Amazon. And one of the things that they do is sell it as quick as they can. And I understand why. Because there's no, there's no time, there's no, no, you don't know when Amazon is going to um, sell against you. And if Amazon starts selling against you, guess who's gonna win? Amazon has all the data, it's their website. They have massive capital to go out and buy products in bulk. Like, let's say, give you an example. Uh, I was used to sell residential furniture. And let's say this bedroom set cost me 550 wholesale. Well, let's say I was selling against Amazon and Amazon opened up a furniture store. 
Amazon could go ahead and get that same bedroom set and they can cost them a hundred dollars. It's costing me 500, but they can get it for a hundred dollars, that same bedroom set. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to sell it cheaper because they got it cheaper and it's going to obliterate me and it's going to move me out the market. And one of the, you know, this, this is, you know, get back to the gig work. I feel that gig work is prepping America for a low wage future, low income future. And this is why I think the gig work is a cancer. And once again, gig work ain't going nowhere. And I am a part of it. I use DoorDash at least four or five days a week. I use Instacart once, once a week or once every two weeks. And I use Uber and Lyft. At one point, I was using Uber and Lyft every day. So I am a contributing factor to the gig economy because I'm part of the raw, naked marketplace. It's like, I want what I want, when I want it, how I want it, and I want it to be cheap. So I'm, a, I'm participating in that. So gig work ain't going nowhere no time soon. It's not gonna disappear, it's not gonna collapse. It's going to increase because there are more people like me who are like, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and share some stuff. Like I don't go to the grocery store. I don't go to a restaurant if it's hard to get to. If it's difficult, like uh, Cheesecake Factory is literally, I could walk to Cheesecake Factory, right? I order DoorDash because Cheesecake Factory is part of Linux and the parking is atrocious over there. I'm like, it could take me 10, 15 minutes once I get there just to find a place to park. So I don't go there. I just DoorDash it. And like grocery stores. I have not been in the grocery store. I don't know when. Instacart, if you know, I just, I just don't go out and do those kind of things. So as we become that kind of nation, gig work is just gonna keep growing and growing and growing and growing. It's just gonna keep getting bigger. But gig work for the people who do the gig work is a bad deal. And I know that makes me sound somewhat hypocritical because I'm probably gonna order some from DoorDash tonight. I probably will. But once again, um, I am part of the raw marketplace. We want what we want. We want, we want, we want it how we want it. We want it, we want it when we want it. I'm like, if there's something on DoorDash, like there's this restaurant I like to order from, I get annoyed when they're closed. I get annoyed. I'm like, what, what is this? So from the part of being a consumer, part of the raw marketplace, I understand that these uh, gig economies, the gig ain't going nowhere. Like I said, it's going to grow. And for the poor people who have to participate in the gig economy, and this is one of the reasons that I tip fairly well on Instacart and I tip fairly well on DoorDash, because I know that these folks are not making a lot of money. They're just not. So the gig economy is just going to keep growing. I'm waiting for the next big app to come out because right now there's someone in San Francisco. Guess where they seem to be coming from? San Francisco, who's working on the next gig app. And I don't know what it's going to be because, you know, driving is covered. Food delivery is covered. Grocery stores is covered. And I was talking to one Instacart person. He said Instacart went, 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 went trash once the stimmy money left the economy, so I don't know. But yeah, the gig economy is killing the American workforce. And I, Glendon Cameron, am participating in it, and I'm gonna continue to participate in it because I am part of the raw marketplace. So let me know your thoughts and the comments and opinions, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.